I think they've got to have a better lane matchup for Natsumi. Like, as you said earlier on, Mike, there are only so many heroes you can ban from FBZ, but I think the key thing is you don't want to give him uh, an unplayable lane for Natsumi. So just take a pause one that's less situational. Like the Naga Siren was just completely counteracted by the Timber Siren lane. We saw it early on. FBZ forced Natsumi into the jungle by the time he was level 5, I think, and he just overtook the lane. It was a bit of a slow start for your Naga, and your mid matchup wasn't that quick as well. You didn't have a massive win condition coming out there for Polaris. So I think they need to kind of compensate, maybe shift the duties of scaling around and give a little bit more for Lelouch to scale on, as I think that one-on-one -on -one matchup is a bit more manageable for him compared to having Natsumi just completely countered out. That could be the way to go, as we do see the initial draft here. Mike Boom Esports starting off with a Snapfire and a Clockwork and Polaris into the Knicks and Mars. So they've got the Snap counter as we saw Scam play it in game one. Snapfire not going to have a good time getting the Kisses off, but the rest of the kit is still really good. And I think for Boom, if they are just playing, say, a support snap once more on Tim's, we've seen him do that a couple of times, you're still going to have a good time. Your emphasis on the Kisses is kind of gone. As we've seen last time around, he couldn't get any good kisses on Polaris's end. But if you play around with your with Scatter Blast and the Cookie instead, it can still feel really strong. They just kind of need to remove the reliance on the kisses. So they have to look for a team fight elsewhere on Boom Esports side, just so that they can have a little bit more control, more damage outside with Snapfire. I don't think it's going to be a mid snap this time around for Boom, as I think Yopaj does rely on those kisses to dominate the mid. But it's still open enough. Maybe Yopaj is confident anyway up against. Nick Assassin, he could just go for Travels, Blink, BKB as his build up instead and still have a good time. Oh, absolutely. Oh, we'll see. Polaris Esports. They'll continue their draft now. Third pick up for them. You might just go back for a POS 5, POS 4, depending on what you feel like you need. And they will. They'll go into the Dark Willow now. Fair enough. And that could be a bit of a, a respect pick against Tim's, because we know Tim's does enjoy playing the POS 4 Willow himself. And of course, with the pause on Snapfire, I guess we can just kind of automatically assume we, we know where it's going. It's not going to the, uh, the pause 5 roll. We know it's going mid lane for the idol. So, Tim's, <laughs> I, I do believe, still requires a pickup, John. And if I may, in fact, mm. I can't. I was going to say I'd love to see the Tim's Murana. It was banned out by Boom, unfortunately, so we aren't going to get to see this game. Assuming that it is going to be a mid Snapfire, do you have any pick you'd like to see Tim's on, John? Monkey King. I think okay. this Monkey King is the scariest Monkey King in Southeast Asia. Like, I mean, how do you get a pause for Monkey King that goes like 15 0 15 the last time you saw it? <laughs> it's just ridiculous. He had Mage Slayer by what 12 minutes as a support pause four, and quick. he had more farm than pause one, or he had more farm than the offlaner in mid, I think, in that game. So, I think that's something Boom can use really well. It provides information with her clockwork. So you've got the Flare and the Tree Dance coming in to kind of let you gank around. Of course, you do have to worry about the Mars cutting trees down, and that could cause issues. They instead go to Pangolier first. So there's some flexibility here for Boom. We've seen the Tim's Pangolier. We've seen the FBZ Pangolier as well. I'm thinking that's Tim's because they don't know what FBZ is laning up against yet. So they get the Pangolier with a Clockwork support likely now and the Snapfire on mid. But again, you can still shift it around. Tim's could still play Snapfire. FBC could take the Pangolier off lane, and that's still a really strong lane. Snap Pangolier, lots of control, lots of good damage. Little Shredder synergizes with a Swashbuckle quite well, and you can kind of just overwhelm Natsumi once more if the lane matchup does work out. Yeah, certainly so. A Boom Esports fourth pickup now. The Pango, very flexible as well. We don't necessarily know whether it's going to be an off lane or a, or a full Pangos. We know Tim's and FBZ both do kind of specialize with this hero. And it is going to be an off lane because we do have a Rubik coming out now. So it's been a while since we've had the pleasure of watching this hero come out. But, you know, Nyx Assassin, Dark Willow, Mars, all great spells to, to steal away here for the Rubik. Still, it, it, it's a very interesting draft here from Boom John. Very aggressive, if I do say so myself. Yeah, it really is. Um, you know, I'm. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> low chance of it happening, Mike, but mid Rubik? Mm. How, how about mid Rubik? You know, don't, it shifts away the emphasis on the snap fire with the kisses, right? Don't do that to me, Yopaj, John. again, relies on the kisses. Rubik mid could work out. It's lane dominant with the fade vault. You bring um, me back, John. You, you, get... <laughs> you bring me it back has all some good the way. TI1, oh, yeah. Jonathan. You're the dendy mid Rubik. <laughs> I still remember I was there. Late at night watching those games, man, th that was a time to be alive. 
Goodness me, I'd love to see the mid Rubik, Jonathan. I mean, your Paj, he's a cheeky boy. He might bring it out. He might bust it out. He, I mean, Mushi is part of the team as well. Mushi was back there in those days going mm -hmm. against the mid Rubik, John. So I, I'd love to see it. We'll see if it does happen. In the meantime, though, Polaris Esports, they have picked up the POS1 Morphling for Natsumi. So I have a comfort pick for him. You know, I don't think Morphling's in the greatest spot, but Natsumi clearly feels very comfortable in the hero and may just want to go back to it to, to try and switch up the momentum, try to get game two underway for themselves. What is it, John? You've got something yeah. to say. They've got pretty scary synergy with Polaris. Ags, Morphling with Dark Willow, Mike. That's a oh. uh, busted combination with the, yes, it is. Uh, the damage you have there in that <laughs> invulnerability form. So the Morphling can opt to go for a right-click build with the Ags. And suddenly you can't kill him. You literally can't. Your AoE control is there on Boom, though. Kisses, the, again, if it does fly through, is there. You've got the Rolling Thunder to kind of hit him around in that invulnerability state. And to a certain extent, Clockwork with his targeted spells can kind of do that too. But it's still a major spike. And I think Polaris could look to play that way. We don't see that emphasized in Southeast Asia. I think other regions have brought out that Morphling Dark Willow combo. Not so much in C as we have seen it more of the Spirit Breaker and Wind Ranger. And, of course, the Shaker. But I think Polaris, if they look to experiment that way, this could be the this could be the play. Just go morphling ags with a dark willow and just machine gun them down with that spike. That's uh that's one way to kind of get win over boom, I suppose. Yeah, I'd I'd certainly agree with you, John. That is a very, very busted combo if you do get to the stage where you can have the ags up. Again, Morphling hasn't looked like the greatest carriers of late. So we'll see if Natsumi does want to go down that route, but that would make me very happy in this game two of the best of five grand final. Boom Esports, though, more importantly, do have their own POS1 to pick up here. What do you think Mushi wants to play? I mean, last game around we saw the Razor, but that doesn't do very well into the Morphling, so you'd rather not go down that route. Do you want to go a bit more of a standard position one and say pick up something like a Terror Blade or... Maybe a Life Sealer could work out. No, it was banned early on. Jug could give you the same thing against Mars. They go with a Spectre instead. So they are giving themselves a bigger win condition now in Boom because that's what they were really lacking. Scaling on Snap is good, but again, you might not hit that scaling timing with a Nyx and the enemy team. It's hard for you to snowball without the Kisses up. So I think the Spectre gives Mushi that kind of here we've been seeing him play the past few days. Something more farm heavy, something less tempo oriented. There is the Ag Spike for the Spectre as well. So you can choose to play around the haunt, have the hook shot to follow through and the kisses coming out much easier as well to isolate out the Nyx. So you know when you jump in, you don't have to worry about the spike carapace once that specter has the ags and you can kind of commit in the hero. So, I think I made a mistake, I like that by the way. I just mm -hmm. thought to myself, it was a TI1 or TI2 the mid Rubik was happening. Because I, I can't remember, Rubik wasn't initially in Dota mm. 1, right? In the beta? Yeah, I'm, it may have been TI2. See, my memory is getting really bad now, John. I'm not 100% <laughs> sure. It was back in the day, though. You, you remember Way those back. games. The big oh, ravage. Yeah. I, I can't remember. Yeah. I, oh, for sure. The big ravage deals. That was like TI3 where Dendi was really shining on that. Right. But I can't specifically remember. I, I, I will reveal this now. I actually didn't watch much of TI1 and 2. I think it was TI3 when I really oh, watched a lot. Jonathan. So, yeah, I missed out on that classic. I, I didn't watch it live, I mean. It was at TI3 when I got my... It was right before TI3. No, actually, it's during TI2 when I got my Dota beta access. Because back then, you still needed the code, I think, in TI2. And, yeah, missed out. I was just playing dumb. I was building building perseverance in everyone but what's not dumb is polaris's last pick bat rider coming out here for their mid it is a yopaj snap so we will have the tim's rubik not switching it out too far here for boom having the snapfire once more the bat rider for lelouch though the snapfire can be overwhelmed by that i think we used to see that in bts pro series three or four again this was the matchup we used to see often and i think abed and yopaj kind of struggled against the bat rider the turn rate of snap becomes atrocious you can't line up for a cookie save uh, all too easily when bat riders just dancing around you in circles so i think polaris have set themselves up well here they have a great win condition in their morphling they have the team fight set up on their mars they've got the nicks to break off yopaja's snowball and they even have the bat rider for lelouch to control the lane against that snap okay i'll ask you the hard question john i mean boom esports they win this second game they've got a great bit of momentum going for them polaris esports obviously want to not allow that to happen because we've seen what momentum can do in a grand final series but who has the superior draft going into this game too john 
Draft wise, I would say Polaris. I think Polaris's draft is a lot more well rounded. They have this really good early spike with her Batrider and Mars. They can stall out for the Morphling to hit that Ags timing. Play there. They could still opt for the E Blade timing as well for Natsumi if he does feel like he just wants to magically burst down the Spectre. That could be one route, but there's a lot of options for the Morphling. Whereas for Polaris, it just feels like their emphasis on early game is really strong. But all these four heroes outside of the spec, if they do falter in the laning phase into the mid game in the first 20 minutes, it can be a bit hard to recover. And it just becomes the Spectre show. I think Polaris's draft is a bit more forgiving. But when it comes down to execution, I still find that Boom might be able to pull it off. <laughs> yeah. Well, with that, John, we are going to get into game number two. By the way, in the meantime, while you were just talking about the, uh, the drafts, our admin Dougie has confirmed it was indeed TI2. So there you go. He also called me a boomer, which is not very nice, John. I'm already, <laughs> already quite, quite worried about my age these days and getting called boomer by the younger ones out there. Not very nice at all. There you go. Yeah, TI2. well. Yeah, you I'm know, old, John. Our it's admin Dougie. Oh, you're you're not old. Dougie's just extremely young, way too young, for doing esports. That youngin. Mm. Actually, he's, if you remember, he's like super young, like strangely way too young. Is he really? And that's something like you have. Yeah, like I think he's like, okay, Dougie's going to call me out when he reaches this, but like 22, 23? Wow. Maybe 24? And you know, all of us, were tw I'm 28, you're 30, Zex is up there as well, Nina is up there. So, Dougie, we're not old, you're just young. True. Very, very true. I mean, it was... <laughs> Literally in the middle of the night as well for us back then, John, at, uh, at TI1 oh, yeah. as well. I mean, you, we had to be up at like, I can't remember, like 1, 2 a.m. in the morning to watch the games. 30 seconds to battle. It's a uh, fun time. Very, very fun time. I mean, half the people oh, watching yeah. didn't even believe the tournament was going to pay the prize money. <laughs> That's how long ago it was. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. A million dollars That's back then. That was insane. It was insane. Like, it, in, in a, to a certain extent, it still is somewhat insane. Yeah. But now we have even bigger figures, so who knows what else will be insane down the line here if we do it to Yeah, I mean, some people like to compare animes, John. I like to compare prize pools. That's what I, uh, <laughs> how I dictate the better MOBA. <laughs> oh, Mike. I, I, some people forgot about the war, John. I've st I'm on the front lines all the time. I'm, I'm never forgetting. Mavis. Gonna get cut off here by Skem. Battery Assault. Gonna do a bit of damage there to Mavis, but he will be able to eventually outrun Skem. No issue here. Where is Skem going though? Still hanging around the mid lane. No sentry wards available on Skem, so he's just gonna make the run back down bot. And yeah, seems like that is gonna be the game plan. He'll just come back down bot. Where we will see Mushi, of course, against Force and Xavius. Not the easiest lane in the world for the Spectre. I think Mushi should still be okay in terms of just being able to survive through it. But in terms of CS, it can be pretty rough. Yeah, it's very hard to work this lane for the spec, especially with a clockwork support. Like right now, Skem isn't even playing that area. He gets a D ward off, he's gonna walk back in, trying to give some solo EXP for Mushi to maybe hit his level two and feel a bit more secured. But there's a lot of damage coming through from Polaris here. You've got the God's Rebuke, you've got the Spear down the line, you've got a Bramble Maze to hook into the Spear, tons of control. And once you hit level 2, level 3 for Force and Saviors, it can become even easier to line up for those kills. Well, bot lane scam, he's got an aggressive now along with Mushi. Onto Force they go, because they couldn't keep going onto Xavius because of the Shadow Realm. But you can never underestimate the amount of damage at level 1 with that Battery Assault on the clock. I believe it is one of the highest damage skills at level 1, if not the highest. So Skem being very aggressive already and making good work of it as he has another one available. Back on a force. Just won't leave them alone. In the meantime though, top lane, Natsumi ends up dropping an FBZ. That's something I wasn't quite expecting to happen this early, but well there you go, they managed to make it work. Yeah, they, they had Natsumi at low HP for such a long time and for a Morphling without a healing support, you can't really do the juggle your HP all the way down to one on Max Agi, get fully healed up, go back to lane. The Nyx Assassin doesn't provide that for you. So you have to play this lane a bit more conservatively. There's some good early damage here for Boom to play with, with a Swash, with a Shield Crash, and a Fade Vault up. The Lift Control is really good as well. With level two up and not to me, it's gonna be a bit harder to pull that off. He's got the Waveform to retreat. And by the time he hits level three, it becomes a bit more manageable for the Morphling. Still, you're not expecting too much aggression from out, but they do get good stun on Tim's. But they do. 
They won't be able to capitalize though. I mean, it's kind of the weakness of the Morphling. You, you need to get to that level 3 mark to feel comfortable enough to, to make the jumps in with the waveform. And even then, uh, these days the Morph would much rather just hit creeps if you can. Just get to that mid to late game timing and then become a real powerhouse. Till then though, FBZ going to be very aggressive on the Pango. Be as annoying as humanly possible. It's a bit rough as a plus 5 Nyx Assassin as well. because You've got the spells to just keep them away, but you miss the Impale. Chances are Natsumi is going to be kind of screwed. Yeah, and you just kind of have to play it slow and watch for the forward aggression. Oh go. boy, oh, yeah, man. you're still level 2 Natsumi. You, you can't do that. He didn't back off in time, and FBZ, he finds another pick off onto the Morph. Okay, that, that's not good news for Polaris. Like, you want the Morphling to go off to a running start. It still kind of farms a bit faster than Spectre almost. Actually, that's a bit even. You do have better mobility on a Morph, but the Spectre can also jump through camps quite well. So you kind of want your Morphling to keep up pace. And you're already lagging behind in CS. Having deaths on hand also complicates the process. As even Mavis now dropping low. Does have one salve left, that's only going to heal one of your heroes. So, someone's going to have to play a lot more conservatively, and I think for Natsumi, just keep holding out until you hit your Morbid Mask, that's when you can create hits at the least. Well, bot lane Skem ends up dropping a little bit low there on the clockwork, but he did not get caught by the Brambles. Meanwhile, mid lane though, Yopage! He's going to find a solo pick off onto Lelouch, and that is not something you usually see as a, as a Batrider. That's going to be a bit of a problem. Your pass just able to pick him off on this snap. And in the meantime, top lane, Mavis is going to die solo to Tim's. Oh, this game is getting worse and worse already for Polaris. And they're just finding all the wins in lane here for Boom. We talked about that top lane. They only had one source of regen, so someone was going to die. At the very least, it's Mavis and not Natsumi. And Natsumi does hit his level 3 for the mid, though. Like we talked about the Snap versus Batrider, and I expected Batrider to have a better lane, because this was the counter a year ago, and now Lelouch, he's a level behind, it's that kiss timing again, he's just completely shoved back, he just TP'd back in, he, he's gonna have to waste his bottle to regen, it might be time to consider stacking up and clearing out camps instead to get your head start here. Well, he's very lucky to survive, I mean, he avoids the cookie, and well, had that cookie landed, those kisses, once you get them initially going with the added slow, it can be a little bit hard to juke them out, but Lelouch barely avoiding the cookie this time around and is going to be able to at least feel a little bit safe while the kisses are on cooldown. I only say a little bit though, I mean he did kill him without the kisses first off, so you know, you're never really safe from Japoy. Lelouch will just try to catch up in terms of XP. He's going to be just about two levels behind very soon. So again, just a very, very bad sign here for, for Polaris' top lane. Mavis, he's going to drop again at Natsumi. He'll strength morph, but he is getting rather close to dying. FBZ, oh. he'll go back in. Natsumi, really playing on the edge. He'll be okay. He'll survive another day, but... You see, Tim's, he's wrapping around. He's got the lift up in five. He wants to land that Fade Bolt with the Swashbuckle, but it's still not going to be enough. In the meantime, Yopage finds Lelouch again. Skem rotates this time around, but it looks like it, it was a bit of a dive onto Yopage, and it just does not pay off. Yeah, I think Lelouch might be getting a bit uh, trigger itchy here. Like, he's feeling pressure on him, and he expected to win out the lane a bit more. A lot of good plays from Yopage. I think earlier on, he managed to force out a TP bait. So he had five stacks of Napalm. TP'd out, uh, Lelouch backed off and just went back in on the from Small place like that, Kyle's on. Although they will rotate, save you, here. Yeah, they should have something. Brambles are there, Tim's though with the lift up is gonna try and save us. Yopage is still alive with the stick charges, turns back around with the cookie scatter blast, but he should drop and does. Tim's might be able to find Xavius, but now the Firefly is there from Lelouch. But he's dropping low himself now. This crown will at least force Skem back for a little bit. That'll allow Lelouch to get himself out. I suppose with the way this game's gone, you just picked up your first kill. You get the mid-snap fire. You've got to be happy with that. That's a Mushi. nice pick up there. Oh. Bot lane, he is very low. He's going to try and man fight uh. back force. One more hit away, but he couldn't get it. And now you're Page. <laughs> well, you kill him in the mid lane, but then he shows up in the bot lane and he still finds something for his team. I mean, sure, you force Mushi back to the fountain, but... 
he's going to be okay with that, I think. Radiant are scanning. Yeah, he lives. He didn't really have to try to bait out for the hunt. He just gets to reset. He can start playing in the jungle now. Start building up on that Spectre. And still a really strong start for Boom. 7-1. to one. Not much of a net worth lead this time around by only 1k. And that is mainly on... Japoy and FBZ right now. So you are still suffering a bit in the Spectre, but it's not like Mushi's lagging too far behind Natsumi. So overall, the pause one's not, not having a great time on either side, but Boom definitely having the better end on their offlane and mid. And that's going to lead to that aggressive timing we expect. Rolling Thunder is ready on FBZ, just rushing into the blink. Yopaj travels almost up and the kisses fly in. Yep, they do. Tims does get the vision over for Yopaj. And of course, the kisses do go through the Shadow Realm. So Yopage will send Xavius to the Shadow Realm, ironically enough, for any Yu-Gi-Oh fans out there. Bot lane, <laughs> bit of a dive in onto Force. Won't work out. John, I feel kind of ashamed to ask you, but have you watched Yu-Gi-Oh? Yes, okay. I have. Uh, I don't know, John. You've got a very acquired taste in anime. I've just <laughs> got to make sure. Hey, I watched all the classic kids' animes, you know, the, the merchandising animes. Beyblades was one. The best. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! was great. Oh, Beyblade was outstanding. There, there was that revival Beyblade series I wasn't a big fan of, though. I forget no. the name, but that was kind of weird. Trash. Still, classic smite. What is classic as well as this performance from Yopaj? Travels up, blink next, and it is the BKB rush, as we talked about from Draft. So he just wants the BKB, spell immunity from the Spike Carapace, full use of the kisses coming through, and suddenly that Nyx counter pick isn't going to feel all too great, as long as Yopaj understands when to pop that spell immunity here. Easy farming here for the snap. He's well and truly ahead of anyone else on the map right now, Yopage. And this has been something that's just been continuously happening throughout the games we've been watching of Boom Esports. So Yopage, for at least the first 15-20 minutes, will just hold the net worth lead by himself. Still manages to have massive impact, considering how much he's farming. Still, mid lane. Cookie does land. Yopage will get him with the Scatter Blast, but now you do have Lelouch who does show up. You've got Lasso available for Force. He'll drop the arena. They may have gone too far with the Rolling Thunder. FBC, he's made it in time. Yopage, he will drop in the end. Haunt is here though. Mushi, he'll join the team fight. They'll get the Mars down. Lelouch now, who do you want to go after? He still has the Lasso up, but he won't commit it quite yet. Terrorize is there. He might look for a way out instead, and it looks like he will. So a big win there for Polaris. You lost the Mars, but you get two in return. And as long as they get this Batrider out of here, they should be happy with that. The FBZ still trying to chase, but can't quite make it. In fact, now Xavius going to go in with the Cursed Crown. Bedlam out as well. Impale, though, is going to be off the mark. Oh, Mushi still posturing very aggressively on the Spectre, but can't do too much at the moment. Still a really strong pickoff for Polaris, finally taking care of that Snapfire, but it does give Boom the opportunity to group up mid and look for a push. Even at level 1 low Shredder, that's enough to do some work onto that tier 1 tower, and Polaris have to be ready for the defense. They still have Lasso up in Lelouch here. Yep. Nice Lasso out. Mushi has been caught, and that'll be a very, very big pickoff now for Polaris. It's the kind of kills you want to see coming out. Lelouch, obviously, he had a very tough start to his lane on this Bat Rider, but does have the comeback potential Dyer's here and top is top making top it work. Attack. In fact, now, Yopaj, spotted out by Natsumi, but that is a core snap, so Yopaj, he's going to be fine to run. Just bails out, travels up, move speeds up, very hard to chase down. Blink not too far off from Yopaj. They are playing pressure onto FPC here. Yeah, they've got him. Another nice setup here. Mavis getting an impale off and Force, he'll just take over with the arena spear. Still TP's on here now. Yopaj, he's joined in on the snap. They want a bit of revenge. Skem, he's got the hook shot with the cogs up, and that'll be more than enough. Once you land it into the Mortimus Kisses, they don't have enough mana though for the cogs. So Force, he might make it out. Can he juke around the Kisses? It does seem like he will make it. Because now the chase is on, Lelouch will be there after Skem. Scatter Blast will not land either. They'll get one. They might even have another as the Impale will land a second time at FBZ. He's going to show up with the Rolling Thunder, and they are going to turn. Very successfully onto the Batrider. And it looked like a great start. It had a bit of an awkward turn there for Boom, but in the end, it still pans out for him. And um, Mavis is not quite safe yet, I can see. Oh, Mavis. Yeah, he just gets chased down. Fair enough, FBZ just taking it all the way. 
Picking up his fourth kill of the game now, the Pango. I suppose they will get back to just trying to push in that top tier one tower. I suppose in the meantime for Polaris though, they'd, they'll just be happy with the fact that Natsumi has been able to freely farm up. And actually has caught up quite well uh, in terms of net worth, only behind the snap now. In fact, Force has shown up to boot. They've got Arena and five. That's a great spear out onto Mushi. And they should have to kill Mushi. He can't survive the damage output. They might be able to still turn. So the liftback is there on Force, but he has the Arena now. So Yapaj, he's shown up again. Cookie in. He will get the Mars down. But now Natsumi going to show up, go back in after the Rubik, and might even have something to say about this snap fire as the TP will not work out. Yapaj, he's very low on mana now. He might be able to just outrun them with the movement speed, but it doesn't seem that way. So FBZ shown up, but it's one by one. And it might just be another kill to go the way of Polaris. Still Mushi, he'll rejoin. Yopaj is somehow still alive. He'll make it out as they take Mavis down. Lelouch now, he's the one that's trying to get the hell out of here. But FBZ's on the chase. Won't get the shield crash in time, however. Still swashbuckle to the high ground. But will not be able to lock down the bat. Still a strong trade for Polaris. They managed to slow down that Spectre once more, keeping Mushi behind pretty much all the cores. I and mean, Mushi is behind, but he's still above Lelouch and Force. So I think your Spectre relatively is still pretty well farmed. I think for Polaris, in this win condition they have on Amorphal needs to build up more. The SNY has to fly through soon. Natsumi can start showing up to some early engagements, get some right clicks off, start to overwhelm. Boom early on as you know the emphasis starts to shift from the snap to the Spectre and Mushi's still a bit behind that aspect. But there's still a lot of room to grow for Yopash. You know, his blink is finally up, so you can look to make some great plays with a cookie now and the blink scatter blast. And of course, again, that BKB is gonna be a key timing for Yopash. Once that's up, that might force Polaris to have to hold the flaming lasso just to catch that snap. They want to find that kill. And that means there's more room for FBZ to just roll around, more room for uh, Mushi to just use the haunt, use the daggers to chase someone down. Yeah. Good lane, Tims. I'll take the, what's uh, that even called? The God's Rebuke. Doesn't really have a shield on the Rubik, but you know, it doesn't really matter. Still get it off. Might see a bit of a smoke up here from Boom. And they will. It's like Mavis was pinged out on the Nyx Assassin. He was under vision for a moment. In fact, now is again under vision. Not quite the target you really want to go after, so they'll go into that Dire Triangle instead, see if they can find a better target. In fact, they will. They'll find the Mars immediately into the Cogs, and well, this time they had the mana. In fact, FBZ, he jumps forward with the Blink Dagger. He gets another. They've got the Dark Willow controlled up, but do they have the damage? It doesn't seem like it. Not quite yet, but FBZ, he's back in, and Yopage does manage to get a double. It's boom. They wrap around towards that T1 mid tower. And this time around, they should have it. Yeah, they're finally going to be able to commit while doing so, buying space out for their spec. Timps even has the stolen terrorize. So if there is a fight to break out, they can easily disengage now on the side of Boom. They just take it unceremoniously. No defense coming out from Polaris, shrinking mound the map of Polaris further, making it a bit tougher for Natsumi to share farm with Lelouch and with Forest. Lelouch, though, at least has the Boots of Travels up, very close to that BKB. Yeah, still got the lasso. Bot lane, they missed the spear, but they still morph in, get the cookie off, but now the terrorized Tims, he's stolen away. There's no strength morph out, Natsumi. He's gonna be caught, and now Force. He'll try to run. Can they catch him? Maybe not. Horn is committed, Mushi. Trying to find a way in. Let's get the Spectral Dagger off onto the Dark Willow, Xavius. Get the Cursed Crown off in time. Terrorize is there onto FBZ, but Yopaj, he's got the Scatter Blast. Lane break though. Lelouch, do you want to reinitiate? Or well, FBZ, he'll go in himself. With the Mortimer's Kisses out, they'll have plenty of follow up damage. That'll be another kill for the Snapfire. What do you do? I mean, Tim's on this Rubik. He just catches Natsumi with his pants down. Maybe even about to catch Mavis, and does. It's a nice lift off. That'll be another one for the books here for Boom Esports. Polaris, great start, but a terrible ending for this team. Yeah, not the way that fight should have broken out. They were going for a smoke play in the triangle while that entire play happened down bot, and they were just so slow to react, slow, slow, so slow to turn. 
and help out their morph, their key hero, and trying to build up that win condition. Natsumi set back once more from that death, barely above FBZ's farm. Still a decent amount above Mushi, but 500 gold now isn't an item advantage at all, and Mushi's about to hit his Ag Spike soon. Once that Ag's is up in the Spectre, that aggression we were seeing from Boom Mike is going to kick up in gear. They're not going to be relying on just one big cooldown. They're going to have that shadow step up to allow them to keep scouting out for a single target pickoffs and keep cleaning them up. Lelouch, very careful here is Skem. He's going to get caught, but he has the cogs and he still has the hook shot. In fact, you've still got the terrorize. Tim's going to send him right back home. Polaris got to be very careful with these spells. That terrorize just so impactful on Tim's. He's going to have it up a couple times more before it does expire. Well, at least one more time as Rolling Thunder's going to be there. Hook shot right in on to the Nyx. And that'll be Mavis. Impale out. He's going to try and buy a bit more time, but it's not looking great as FBZ. He's still on to another. On to Force, but they'll go back for Mavis instead. Leave the Mars Bees. He is a bit too tanky. Let him TP out. But it's a 20 to 9 now. 5k net worth advantage. I suppose the only big positive right now for Polaris is Natsumi is still well and truly ahead of Mushi. But it's only about 400 gold ahead right now, so it's not the biggest lead. No, it's not enough to really have that spike on Morphling. And Tim's is just watching him. What? Tim's? Oh, Tim's? What? Oh my god. All right, Tim's. I mean, Natsumi gives him the tip. I don't blame him. Just complete outplays here from Tim's. Uh, it's one of those things as the morph, if you get lifted up, it's you can't strength morph, and Tim's, he just takes full advantage with the impel he stole. Man, that's got to be so demoralizing for Natsumi. And that was really good timing from Boom, though. They, they timed that rotation out. They've seen Natsumi in that area for a long time with his obs ward, and Tim's was making his way from that bot <laughs> gang. Discord <laughs> issues again, Skem. Discord again. Gary, what's wrong with your Discord? I can't take this seriously. I really can't. I mean, oh, Discord. The irony is, John, we've been using Discord this whole time. I mean, to be fair, though, you've, ha you've had a lot of camera issues over Discord, so maybe, yeah. maybe they are correct. I guess we can't make fun of the issues anymore. Thanks to you, John. Yeah. No, 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 no. The, the audio has been fine, right? Except for that one moment where I didn't know I disconnected. I, I think I went on a full minute ramble. Then when I reconnect, you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so it does happen. I can understand. You know, maybe maybe someone's yelling on the mic and boom, and everyone doesn't hear, and suddenly he's back and it's like, why didn't you guys react? It's like, you said something? Yeah. No, yeah, those, uh, those kinds of issues can can be jarring. No, so, you know what? You know. I blame you, yeah. John, because Gary did ask. What? Gary did ask. He needed some help with some visas into the Philippines. <laughs> I tagged you in the tweet, and you said you quote-unquote helped him. But as far as I'm concerned, John... They aren't in the Philippines yet. They aren't in the team house. So this is your fault. This is why we're paused right now. If you did your job and got the visas, John, this wouldn't be a problem. I'm sorry. I'm not as well connected as you'd believe. Still, Discord's fix itself. I have to. I can stop embarrassing myself. But Polaris <laughs> need to get a grip. They timed that again with the Ags of Mushi. So that rotation very patient out from Boom. And they're not done. Skem, he still has Hookshot here if he wants to play. And he does. On to Mavis they go. The Haunt Mushi in. If I say Haunt, but that is the Shadow Step up. So he has got no, the early Haunt Scepter. Oh, it was the Haunt. Never mind. Yeah, they, they used the Shadow Step to kill off the Natsumi. So this time they had the Haunt to jump the support. And now Shadow Step is off cooldown again. So they could look to keep jumping once the mana's up on Mushi. And they go. Skem more than happy to just frontline for the team. Tim still has that impel up. Rocket Flare. Give a bit of vision onto Natsumi, but they're not going to catch anyone yet. Still Xavius. We'll have a look back around, see who's in the triangle. There's Polaris group up now. They might try to force the fight. Boom. They've waited around too long. They'll leave, at least for now. But there's your Shadow Step in. They do get the impel off as well. Lelouch, he's dropped half HP already. We'll try and find a way out now, but FBZ is going to cut the exit route. He's still alive, though, on the cliff. Lelouch, he'll make it out just fine. It's FBZ now. Actually not going to blink. Arena's there, Tim. He does jump in. Impel didn't really connect, though, and they both end up dropping. He had plenty of time to commit the blink or the swash. I believe that was a bit of a bait, but it does not work in the favor of Boom. It's now Lelouch. Try for another. Does get a nice lasso off onto the snap fire. Force. 
Ooh, that's a bit of an awkward spear out, but it may not matter. Your Paj, he'll have a BKB though, he'll run. Still a bit of a chase going as Mushi does commit the Shadow Step once again, and in fact it did matter. He'll turn for the Mortimer's Kisses out onto Force. And it looks like Force, he might have to die for that Miss oh Spear, God. and he does. Oh, God. Yikes. Polaris, it, it's still a good kill. It's not a free kill, though. And I think that's what you need. You want to take favorable trades without any negatives to it. It looked like they did have Yopash. You know, he popped his regen. A right click was coming through from Lelouch to cancel it off. But they couldn't gap close in. Well, Yopash, you give him an inch. He takes a mile. Man, just to blow that open for the side of Boom. 5k lead for Boom standing now. Mike, 23 to 11. Polaris, they've hit this SNY timing on Natsumi. We need to see what he's going for. I... He's going for the BKB first, which is fair, protecting himself from the magical burst coming true, but I think it's time to bring out that axe. It's time to turn into the Dark Willow, play with the Shadow Realm, and maybe itemize for the right click here. That that feels like the safest way for Polaris to win out these exchanges. Boom, into the Roche Pit, and with a minus armor provided by Yopaj, it will fall fairly fast. The side of Polaris, they don't have any wards to watch this. They're grouping down for bot. Not going to be a good trade for them. Certainly not. Boom will just freely take it away. Yopaj, in fact, he'll take the Aegis. I mean, he is the more active core right now. Mushi not requiring it on the Spectre. Mushi, he's going back for an Orchid right now on the uh, on the spec. Something uh, a little bit new, but I guess against the Morphing. Definitely very impactful, especially before he does have that BKB up. Also kind of works with the Snapfire little Shredder later on. So you can't really forget that. It's Force. Been spotted, FBZ knows. Rocket player will give the vision. They get the shadow step in. In fact, that was the haunt this time around from Mushi. Just wanted to make sure the team was not behind force, and they were not. They were well and truly far away. Yeah. So this time, Boom get the free pickoff. They start applying pressure again on that triangle area. It is fairly well protected, but the D wards have come true. Boom's going to be able to reassert control here. TP's up top. There again, Lelouch. Nice. Lelouch has been caught, and he's going to go down to the flame break of Tim's. Very, very rough game right now for uh, for the side of Polaris. 25 to 11, 7k net worth advantage. Not quite as bad as game one, that's for sure, but we are approaching that territory. This net worth gap is really starting to get out of control now. You look at Mushi's net worth, he has overtaken Natsumi. Very concerning signs. He's going to start working on towards that Eye of Skadi now, and that's going to make life for Natsumi a lot more difficult, but they do find Mushi. It's going to be a nice pick off if they can get it. Help is incoming, but the Terrorize is going to land still the Scatter Blast. Yeah, Paj, he does land a double stun out. He might find some trades here, or maybe not Natsumi. He'll try to TP in time with the Hawk Shot. Oh. Scam, he'll make it just in the nick of time, but Natsumi, he'll try to wave from away. The chase is on, the great escape. Natsumi, he may not make it. The lift is out, Tim, he's got him. Oh my god. Oh, they threw everything at poor old Natsumi. He tried so hard, John, but he just couldn't get out. Oh, they at least catch out Mushi on Polaris's end, but boom. Come out with a better trade, keeping that Morphlin down and still building up in Yopaj. Mike, we're reaching that level 20 mark. Yopaj, oh. level 18, about to hit 19, queuing up that Daedalus. So the damage is going to skyrocket for our snap and... Polaris, they've tried to keep Yopaj down. They had the right idea with the Bad Rider. They need to just jump this snap first. They need to get the lasso on the snap and somehow get control. But Yopaj is just very well protected. He doesn't play on the front line unless he knows there's backup for him. And he's just never in a position where he's at risk. Oh, Lelouch, he's been scouted out, Mushi. The shadow step in. He does have hope around Mushi, he may have gone too far. Force is incoming. Arena, still not up, but he'll go for the spear out. Lelouch, he does have the lasso. Mushi, he's a bit of a tanky target, but he is completely alone right now. They will be able to secure a very important kill. In the meantime, Mavis is being chased in the Nyx Assassin, but he's going to be just fine. As they did with the hook shot. Of course, Yopaj, he's going to have to find out the hard way that everyone from Polaris has left that bot lane. Just a bit too keen there on the Shadow Step from Mushi. I don't know if you can really go for the Bat Rider without backup now. Mainly because he moves too fast. And Lelouch is still holding on to that Bullwhip. He knows move speed is the key for him to survive from these ganks. 
and he goes up to max move speed when he pops that active. So I think the Spectre has to tone it down a bit, maybe look for softer targets, maybe uh, haunting on the Mars could be a bit easier, or the supports, just to clean up and build up from that way, could be the way to play. For Boom though, I don't think losing your Spectre actually hurts them much. Uh, I think Mushi still with the Ag's Orchid is going to have a lot of impact anyhow, and Yopaj is still the key hero. He is at 19 and a half now, Mike. Halfway to that little shutter with damage. That should line up with the Daedalus timing, and I don't know if you survived that one. Kind of hard to imagine, John. That's for sure. Kind of sad when a Snapfire might hit harder than, say, the Spectre or the Morphling. That is uh, the state of Dota we're in these days. These damn supports <laughs> have gotten too damn strong. Boom. I'll keep controlling that upper end of the jungle. They still have the Aegis for another 30 seconds, so it might be about time to try and force that top tier 2 tower. Yopaj will go back for it now. As Polaris, they might be able to time a fight around this Aegis, and they do smoke up. Only as three, though. They don't look 100% confident to make their way up a top lane. Are still wrapping, though, into that triangle, it seems. Maybe just trying to find the Spectre. Mushi has backed off. He's read the movement. Scam is around the area just in case they need the help. So it's the only advantage is Polaris. They might find the clock. And they do commit the lasso for this. It's something. Meantime, Mushi will commit the horde. He wants to try and force a fight. He'll at least find a Dark Willow here, but they're going for a bit more. Force has also been caught on the Mars. They just get there so quick. And Scam bought back. He still has Hookshot up. He is staring down Mavis on that Nyx Assassin. He is not within range though. Top lane, however, Shadow Step is there onto Lelouch. But he's going to be okay with the BKB TP up. That still provides a ton of room for Boom. And they only lose the clock. Buyback Forest, not the biggest issue for Boom Esports. They can go on to the mid tier too and clear that out. And suddenly the Roshan for Polaris is basically impossible. You don't have the easiest access points. You will have to get a really good smoke play from your high ground into the Roche, and you have to time that perfectly. Boom. And they hit that level 20 mark, Mike. Uh, Yopaj is going to hit like a truck with a little shredder in. He found those kilts, but out his level 20. So, and that's going to be an issue. Daedalus, 700 gold away. Let's see how much it does for it. Although... Yeah, Tim's gets caught out. A nice little pick-off here for Polaris. Okay, they need everything they can get right now. They'll, they'll appreciate the Tim's kill. Open up the map a little bit for them as well, knowing that pesky pass for Rubik is gone. See if they intend to get aggressive, but I think while this T1 mid tower is still standing for Boom, I, I think that is your probably probably your biggest objective right Radiance now for Polaris. Just get rid of that tower. It's been too good of a of a point to TP to here for Boom throughout this whole game, and that time you just try and get it down. Though FBZ is going to try and be a bit of a nuisance, but they throw everything with the kitchen sink. Blow him up and ensure that tier one is going down. Yep. It's a great kill to find still. I think killing off if ZS, yes, you said, Mike, you take what you can get, you take the objective, freeing up the map a little bit more here for Polaris. Boom. Despite that strong start, you know, their lead hasn't really shifted, Mike. It's been within 5k gold for a long time. And that is a point of concern because the Morphling, as we approach that late game, once the Scotty's up, once the Satanic's up, and eventually an egg's coming through. I still think that Morphling is going to be an issue because, again, once you itemize with a Scotty, once you right clicks up and running, you just suddenly get that Shadow Realm. You get bonus damage from that. You're in a pretty much an invulnerable state. It's a really big spike for Natsumi. Still, they're going to have to contend with Yopaj's own power spike. Daedalus up, a little Shredder damage up. Once he hits level 25, of course, that gets a bit sillier. But Polaris. We'll, we'll smoke out right now and try to force a fight. Well, I think you needed to try to force it with this DD run on Natsumi. I mean, it's a lot of damage. Sitting for about 600 per right click. They're going to find Skem. Not quite the target, but they'll also find Tim's. He does have an A on disc. And the Horde is going to come through. They'll try to force the fight along with them. But can they get it? Natsumi still has that DD and the BKB going. Tim's is still in danger, but the Rolling Thunder from FBZ being a real problem here as now they turn. Natsumi, he's been caught with the Terrorize. Gonna allow him to get out as now Yapaj, he is caught with the Spear. It's off the mark again. The snap by though, dropping fast enough. Natsumi, he'll be able to take him down. Good start for Polaris. 
So they will continue to try here, burn, but Mushi, he can't move fast enough. He'll be speared to a tree, and eventually I think they'll get through him. He does at least get Xavius and Mavis in the meantime, but it's still not looking great for him, and he does drop. MPZ though, he does pick up force, and is still going to try and chase down Lelouch. Not sure if he really has enough damage here, but it seems like with all the control, maybe he does. But Natsumi's going to show up. Turn back around. You've got the roll up, but it's only going to last so long. So the swash away, but the chase is on Natsumi. He wants the kill, and he'll go all the way for this. Swash out, it's going to miss. Waveform forward though. FBZ, he's not out of the woods yet. Rolling Thunder is now off cooldown, but uh, it won't be necessary, Natsumi. He'll stop wasting his time. Is this Pango? Just refusing to be caught. It's a good fight for Polaris. For Boom, it could have been worse. I think finding those counter kills kind of removes some of the momentum Polaris is starting to build up here. But you are having a couple of issues. Uh, they need to kind of respond as a team now in Boom's end. They did stagger into that last fight just a bit. And there was a late entrance there for Mushi as well. And our Spectre doesn't have anything defensive. No BKBs up. Not the tankiest here in the world with the Orchid and Ags build up as well. So you're going to need something else to balance that out. Manta not too far off though from Yushi and that, that should lead to some more survivability. The good news for Boom or kind of good news for both teams is that the Rosh is up. So both sides can kind of force the issue there. Ag Shard, Aegis for the taking on both sides and think for Boom. If they find that kill from the smoke, they'll certainly be able to clear that Rosh fast. A lot of heroes in that mid lane. Polaris, they'll smoke up themselves, but that may have been spotted as the Rolling Thunder gonna go right through and already lands on the Willow, but the Spear Arena is out, but the Aeon Disc Tims, he's fine. Everyone's still alive here on Boom. Now Tsumi, he's moved in. He'll find Skem first onto the Rubik. He'll get him second. Now Mushi, what are we getting up to, sir? He'll haunt back the other way. They're trying to focus down Mavis. And Mavis, he will not drop as Yopage. He's the one to go down. Natsumi now being a real powerhouse. will turn right back onto Mushi. It's not looking great for the Spectre. And they should be able to get this job done. It's Mushi, he's still trying to find an exit route. It's not there, though. Polaris. For the first time in this game, number two are seeming like the stronger team as they will leave, rather go into the Roshan pit. And it'll be free, no buybacks. No buybacks, no opportunities for Boom to play. There is a respawn coming through from Scam soon, but the Rosh is not going to last long enough for him to get into angle. Neither is that easy in position, so. Aegis, Shard, going away with Polaris. Big win for them. Network lead finally swings their way. You've got... Lelouch up and number two, number one for Natsumi in terms of net worth right now. The Ags for Natsumi is pretty much done as well. I think he did divert for the Ags buildup. He's going to get the shard himself as well. So you are going to hit that point where our Morphling might be able to just kill anyone. We shatter him up in back at PC. Yeah, he's been caught. Nice terrorize there from Xavius. Force should have a very nice easy spear and does, and that'll be another. Natsumi, 12, 5, and 4 now. And they had a very rough start, but Polaris, they pulled it together. They've got a net worth lead going their way. In fact, it's 4k their way. And uh-oh, there's that timing you talked about, John. The Axe is up. Dark Willow plus Morphling. This is going to be a lot of fun. Oh, it's going to be fun for Polaris. A complete pain for Boomers. They're just not doing enough anymore. Oh, no. Yeah, well, they did find Lelouch, but there was a nice impale out from the Nyx, and now the Arena Spear is there. Yopage already so low in terms of HP, but they do kill Lelouch off. In fact, the Snapfire has not died yet, and Mavis will end up dropping. So they force the team fight without Natsumi around, and that's going to cost them heavily. As they go into the Dark Willow now, and Xavius should have no escape and doesn't. Very curious kind of play to make here from Polaris. Maybe just getting a bit too excited and they pay heavily. Yeah, that's some good punishment out from Boom. I think for Polaris now, with this Ag's timing in your morph, you play around him. Don't force the fights outside your Morphling's reach. Play with the Morphling, have him join up, have him go into the Shadow Realm, and just right-click like a maniac, because there's no counterplay. Maybe you can hookshot him and just kind of isolate him for a bit. Otherwise, you can't really get all your best control. I, I suppose the cookie can land as well. Very difficult to just pinpoint that Shadow Realm down, though. I think that's where Polaris will shine. A very even game, despite that slower start for Polaris here, Mike. 36 to 25, less than 1k lead coming out from Polaris, and they will smoke up. They don't have the Dark Willow, so there's no uh, Shadow Realm for Natsumi to play with, but 
you might still find a couple of good uses for that Ags. Yeah, I'm sure he will. That should help. Got plenty of uh, decent options here. See those? They, they are smoked as three. This is another dangerous team fight to try and force for Polaris. Even with the Aegis up, FBZ is going to break the smoke on the morph. The rest of the team is slowly making their way over. Poor Polaris, but in the end, they are not going to try and force the fight. They'll back off into that jungle. Just meet up as five. And I, I think that's just the thing. You just talked about it, but there's no need to force a fight if you're not five heroes. You're just kind of putting yourself at a forced disadvantage, which is very unnecessary here for Polaris. It's Boom Esports. They are grouped up as well. Arch does get spotted in the mid lane, but they weren't close enough to make the, the jump in for the lasso. Set down to the bot tier 2 tower, they go. Should be very easy pickings here for Natsumi. There'll be no defense out. I think for Boom, they, they understand they can't really find the Aegis right now. It's just too risky. They'll just have to wait it out to expire. Yep. Just gonna have to be a bit patient here on the side of Boom. Uh, Age is still up for a minute and a half, so there's still a pretty big window for Polaris to get what they want. They will smoke after capturing the outpost. One TPing top to clear out Lelouch, got that but the fight. rest in position. Oh, oh, oh boy. Radiant yeah, Natsumi, he's, he's been a bit preemptive. It's about to Dyer's expire. Is under scan is out as well, so a very nice scan there from Boom to give the knowledge over. And Skem, he's just going to come in and take a D ward, force the, force the fight early on. He might die for this, but he'll be okay. Tank the gank, essentially. <laughs> As you oh, saw the, uh, the shatter up there from Natsumi. God. That, that is just painful. When it's up. Natsumi's just going to be nearly unstoppable. You you think Snapfire is silly. This is even worse. In fact, if Natsumi wanted to be a bit cheeky, I guess you could turn into Snap. But yeah, you don't really benefit from your talent. So Dark Bull is still your best bet. Boom. And it feels like you're stalling out for Mushi now, right? Like, you want your Spectre to actually build up now the damage output of yopage has kind of taken the turn for the worse he is trying to go for the silver edge to amp up even more damage but until then the daedalus just hasn't done enough work his crit damage is like 500 and it, it's just not overwhelming enough to burst down these durable cores polaris has up front the mars has a lot of hp now the morphling can shift around the bat rider is very maneuverable and very tanky as well and it's compounded by the fact that Natsumi now has the full Satanic up as well. So even more strength for the Morphling. He just heals back to full every time he goes into the Shadow Realm and fights. Another kill onto Skem. Nice lasso there from Lelouch. Skem again just frontlining, scouting out any kind of ganks that are coming towards Boom. He does get picked off very easily once the lasso is there. And going back to the point you made, John, the Satanic being available for Natsumi now kind of negates the fact that you don't have the Aegis anymore. Especially prior to that next team fight that is going to be over the third Roshan. You gotta love this. You gotta love Morphling, don't you? The, the Shadow Realm <laughs> combo is just ridiculous. We haven't seen it oh, yeah. being used yet against a hero, but... God, I can't wait, John. It's always a bit of fun with Morphling. Oh, yeah. yeah, um... I don't know why we never saw that in Southeast Asia as much as the Spirit Breaker or the Wind Ranger. But this is hilarious. <laughs> It's just, it's just, why? Why does this work? Why? We don't even get to see the uh, the bonus range yet. We haven't actually got to experience how long Natsumi can, can hit people from yet. Hopefully a uh, team fight will break out and we'll find out soon. Polaris, they still hold a 4k net worth advantage. Dota Plus is actually kind of in the middle, but is 63% the die away. So they are giving the advantage over to Polaris. The good news, if you are a fan, if they find your Pash here, it'll be even better. He does try to blink away, but Lelouch, he's immediately on top of it. Does get the lasso. Nice quick reactions from our Batrider. That'll be uh, your boy Japoya going down. Not great news here for Boom. No. Big kill. No buyback on your Pash as well. So that's a massive opportunity for Polaris. They can start to pressure the last tier 2 tower from Boom. And maybe even look high ground without the snap. A lot of Boom's damage is just gone. Natsumi's coming in. Oh. 
He wants to fight. He's got the Willow right next to him. If he gets to this outpost fast enough, and here we go. They'll make the jump in. Natsumi not morphing yet. He'll just go with the BKB. Mushi's left the building already. Now the morph comes in. FBZ, he'll get out of range. The fight, unfortunately, is already over. Xavius, he goes down and everyone else just, just runs out of it. Not sticking around for the morphling. Yeah, it's, it, it's a massive issue, that morphling. You don't really have the best ways to pin down Natsumi right now. He's just highly maneuverable, has a lot of damage. He's going for the Daedalus next, and all well, that Daedalus timing, Mike, that's uh, that's when this gets really dumb. <laughs> with, with the range, with the poison's damage, and the invulnerability state you're in. Um, yeah, Natsumi's going to be having a really fun game once that's up. Boom. They have a bit of a spike coming back here, Mike, when Yopaj hits 25. The Lola Shredder multi-shot might be nice enough. Like, my issue is that the damage from Yopaj just doesn't feel great. Like, he's trying to hit the Silver Edge. He'll have another crit on hand. His base damage just isn't high enough to make the Daedalus feel amazing. I think they're going to have to wait. They're, they're going to have to find a way to make it a lot higher. Still, boom. Gonna smoke up his tree. They've got the Shadow Step ready on Mushi if they do find a good target, but no one's playing on the bot triangle, and there's no forward wards here for Boom this time around. All the wards being defensive, not much info to play with to find these kills. Certainly not. Speaking of Mushi, Jono, you know, I know Mushi's a support player right now. Is He's got the Witch's Bane on himself. You know, he's not relying on his teammates to, to get the dispel off. He'll do it himself on the carry Spectre. Pretty nice uh, against the Batrider, of course, and, and the Dark Willow as they will roll the Thunder in. Hookshot out, they've got Force trapped up. Terrorize is going to fly in, but doesn't connect on anyone as Mushi. He'll go for the fight onto the Mars, and the Cogs will be the thing that kills him off, but they both fire back. FBZ, he's on the run. Tims will drop to Lelouch. Meanwhile, Yapash will jump back in, but they have the lasso, and now Natsumi. The amount of damage he does cannot be underestimated. Towards the other side, Mushi's also been caught out. He's in the arena with the spear out from Force. They just need the damage, and the damage is on its way as Natsumi is back into the fight. Mushi, he will not last for long. A triple kill out for Natsumi now, as they might find more. Tims, he just fought back into the team fight. He might be going right back to the graveyard, but Mushi, he'll buy back again. Back in onto Force. Can they find the Mars and get the die back? Not quite yet, but there's the hook shot. There's your die back onto Natsumi now. The spear does land. They've got the more without mana Natsumi he may have gone too far yeah, he's gonna drop a triple kill back the way of Mushi as Mavis he'll try to dig his head under the sand but it's not gonna work out for him an ultra kill now out for the Spectre a very prolonged team fight but it does go in the favor of Boom Esports yeah, Boom man just to wake, make it work they did have to commit a lot of buybacks to make it work and oh he wants a more. rampage John he wants a rampage Mushi Feeling hungry as Lelouch, he's forced to commit the lasso and now the buybacks, he may have gone too far. He needs some help ASAP, but the help's not around. Oh, oh he gets baited by his own Rampage and FBZ's here as well. He'll go for a TP, he'll be fine. Oh, but that was a dieback on Mushi. Uh, that fight looked really good for Boom, the dieback sets it back. Polaris now. They're going to be counting their lucky stars. Roshan is going to be up in 20 seconds. No haunt to worry about. No way for the Spectre to sneak into that fight. They've got double damage rune as well for a bit longer here. And that could line up. You know, you could just run in with your Morphling. Get the hits off. Roshan, not going to be too long to kill off. And Boom have to be careful, although. Yeah, nice one shot, Skem. Might be able to pick off one. There is help around, though, so they can trade right back onto Skem. Still trying, Natsumi. Don't forget, he just bought back, so he has to be very careful. But he's just so strong right now that he's not too concerned about the damage Boom can do as now everybody just gets the hell out. Scam is somehow still alive on this clockwork. They do dust him up. Flame Break is there. Sabius trying to jump in, but they can't kill him. Scam's out. And it's off. Oh, man. This, this is really on the edge for Polaris and Boom. If Boom lost any more heroes, that would have been... Might have been the end, especially as you could just take Roshan and go into the high ground as well. Polaris, they also are at a bit of a risk. If Natsumi runs out of mana mid-fight, he doesn't. He suddenly loses out on a lot of his durability. He's not going to be able to leverage his mobility as well. So fortunate for Natsumi to also not get caught out. Boom. They read that situation, they smoke. 
Roshan is up, not being taken though, but Polaris, they might get picked off here. Yeah, Pings on Xavius. Hook shot there, they're not playing any games. That'll be a dieback on the Dark Willow. Roshan, like you mentioned, John, is now available. It's perfect timing for Boom if they scout it out. I think they do kind of have to force it, considering how this game's been going. I mean, obviously, you have to wait for Mushi to respawn. But he's five seconds away. So always just TP up to the outpost and go after that Roche. Polaris, I, I wonder if they'll try to contest. Radiant structures are Without the Dark Willow combination, Natsumi doesn't have as much damage as you'd expect. So I think that's the worrying aspect here for Polaris. Like, they can't actually commit with a morph without the Dark Willow form right now. That's where all their power is coming from. They're going to have to surrender this Roche. It is Aegis, Cheese, and an Axe. So you can kind of free up an item slot here if you want. And Yopage is going to have that gobble up now. So there's some save potential now on her snap. And also some long-range initiation coming through as well for Boom. So really strong pickup for Boom. This could be something that allows them to take more fights in a cleaner fashion. Not fully relying on just a hook shot. Having gobble up play to toss a core up front and get some uh, good control, good stunts off to set the tone. Might be enough for Boom to find openings in these next few fights. Polaris, high ground still holds. No threat yet from Boom. This is long enough that the Dark Willow is going to be back up, so the Morphling form is going to be ready. Uh, Natsumi, still four minutes away from buyback. Did buy out the Ag's Blessing as well. So the Ag's not sitting on an item slot, freeing up the space for the Daedalus. Still ways off from the Daedalus, but Crystalis alone with the Dark Willow form could be enough to really burst down people. Certainly could be. Three seconds for that. In the meantime, Mushi... Just farming up his buyback gold. Of course, it is still on a timer anyway. Three and a half minutes till he does have that buyback, but it's kind of a, a similar story for Natsumi, so you'd rather just have the gold in the bank account ready to go. Meanwhile, Polaris, a big five-man smoke, but Skem, great positioning here, does break the smoke, and now the Haunt in, they might force the fight, they're onto Elush, they've got the Batrider already, but Natsumi, he'll frontline and try to help out, Mavis, he's already gone to the next Assassin, force a great arena, he's got three targets, he's got Yopage, he's got the refresh, he might be able to just permanent lock him down on the Snapfire, but Yopage is still not down, oh. he eats the cheese, he'll survive another day, and they might be able to keep going, they're onto Natsumi now, he's out of mana, he's out of HP and he's going down. Oh my god. There is no buyback on Natsumi as Force will drop to boot. Fall down without buyback. Oh, your Pash. How does he survive? How does he do it every time? I, it's sickening. I don't. I don't understand. Force had refresh. He refreshed right in front of Yopage. He didn't drop the secondary arena. He didn't he didn't get the damage off on the snap and Yopage. Pops a BKB, gets the cheese, gets the gobble up play to find more kills. Polaris has no play. No buybacks. Bat Rider defending it. This is not enough. Mushi, he understands this. The rest of the team still playing tag with Arax, but Mushi looking for the tier forest, looking for the call, but drag the lasso. The fountain. Just drag him right into the fountain. That's all you can do, but Mushi, he'll try to BKB. He will not make it. That won't be enough, oh, but he has refresh. another one. He has another one. lelouchi has got a plan, a master plan, in fact, but it's not enough. Props to Lelouch for trying. He may have successfully defended this Ancient. Because I'm not sure they can finish Yopash. this game. Yopash, he's gone. Lelouch has successfully defended the Ancient. Tims will give the tip over. I can't believe it. I mean, four heroes down with that what? buyback. And one Batrider with a Refresher Orb gets the Ancient defended like that. Unbelievable. Now that's insanity, Yopash. He, he just burned down from the flame break. He had five stacks of napalm and just died. Polaris, it's, they're still in a very awkward position, but it's not actually that bad. They only lost the range racks. So the mid lane's not going to shove out as much as you'd expect it to here for Boom. They still have spikes to play around. They could wait out the next Roshan. Uh, Boom now in an awkward spot. They're going to have to respawn up on Mushi soon. The Morphling's going to be back online, though, and the buyback's starting to... Get off cooldown now for more. He just needs gold on Natsumi to build up. And by that point, the game kind of equalizes. So, boom. Have to be a bit careful in the next high ground defense. They know to refresh is up on Force. They know to refresh is there as well on Lelouch. They need to be really cautious as all that single target control going through BKBs kind of 
kind of dictates how the game goes at the late game, right? Like, if you can pierce through spell immunity, you almost always win the team fights. And you've got Natsumi with the DD rune, John. At the moment, he's yeah. hitting for 700 per right click without crits or the shadow rune. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. <laughs> 700 per right click. So I think uh, Boom will need to wait this one out. Definitely a very scary time here against the Morphling. Looks like Polaris though, they won't feel confident. Oh, uh oh, they're going what? for a smoke, boom. Maybe they haven't noticed yet who have they gone on. They found Lelouch in the background. They want revenge and they will get it. He is down, in fact, Skem, he found another. He's got Mavis on the Nyx Assassin. Mavis, he's trying to just dig into the ground, but he can't get there. He's down without buyback. At least for another 30 seconds. Yep. Not the largest window there for Boom. But that does relieve some pressure of Polaris potentially forcing a fight out. I think the key thing now for Boom is maybe cleaning up that melee racks if they feel like they can commit. Forcing out the buyback on Lelouch could be really nice as well. So if you kill him one more time, that could seal the deal for the side of Boom. Of course, Polaris still hanging on. I think a while ago we saw Xavius kind of far away from Natsumi. They need to stick together like a pair. You know, they need to be joined at the hip. Always have the morph ready to go into the Dark Willow, that uh, Shadow Realm. They will try to force the Rax. I don't know if this is enough for the buyback, but they will find the Rax at least. Might find two, but the tier two bottom tower is still standing. So the most they can get is two Raxes. Definitely better than nothing though. It'll help keep the lanes pushed out and set up for that fourth row shot. Oh, look at that. Oh. Not enough, John. Not enough yet. <laughs> We'll back off for now. Of course, Yopaj, he's, it's always fun to watch him just <laughs> a little shreddering everything on the map, but it's the stage we are at now as well with him. Just anyone's game. What's Dota Plus thinking? Dota Plus 77% seven the way of Boom Esports now. It's been a, a, bit, a bit, bit of a rocky ride here on this graph, but a very entertaining game to say the least. And John, yeah. we're seven minutes away from, from T5 items, sir. Ooh, delicious. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be where the spice is at. Again, I am always an advocate for Giant's Ring. Giant's Ring Spectre sounds pretty hilarious. Giant's Ring Mars, Giant's Ring Bat Rider is pretty fun as well. I think uh what else is pretty good here? You could try Pirate Hat and the Morphling. I think you kinda hit your attack speed cap already though. Maybe not. Force boots might be good to free up even more item slots and not sue me. So after the Daedalus, you could offer a butterfly. And suddenly the damage coming through from Boom doesn't even touch Natsumi because of the evasion. That could be one route as well. But of course, it's all RNG. These, these aren't things to congest. Will into existence, not like the DDs. And we'll see if they'll manage to find ones they want. Or if we'll even reach that point. The, the game is on such a tight balance right now. It feels like we're one team fight away for either side to just find that win. Very tense here in this game, number two. 9k net worth advantage, but it just means nothing. We're 54 minutes in, who the hell cares about 9k? Mid lane FBZ, almost forced to use that Rolling Thunder to escape, but it's gonna be okay. Skem having a look around for a hookshot opportunity for his team. You've always got that global presence with Mushi, and of course, your Yopage with the BOTs up. Polarity. Excuse me, Polaris. Still being very, very patient themselves. Continuously holding that dire high ground on that triangle. It's keeping that bot lane pushed out. Musha's gone to the point where he has a full Bloodthorn up now in the Spectre. And we are also at the point, John, where everybody on the map has buyback. Literally everyone. Huh. Yeah, it's that breaking point. There's a bit more relief for both sides in terms of taking the next fight. So um, it's going to be down to who manages to force the buybacks first and who manages to find the diebacks. That's what's going to open up the game a little bit more. They could just wait out the next Roshan 20 seconds away for Rosh number four. And that's going to have the full complement of Roshan goodies. Refresh, Ags, Cheese, Aegis. And that could Scam. help 
be a team who wins John. out, but... Ooh. It's Harvick, John, top lane. Follow the leader, they say, is FBZ. No lasso yet, he had the Lotus up, and now the hookshot Scam gonna try and make sure that his Pango is gonna remain safe. FBZ coming back in, but Scam, he is definitely dead. Polaris, they're not able to find the kill they really wanted, but they still find a clockwork. It's better than nothing. Keep in mind, Roshan is up, so you might be able to force a buyback out from Skim. Yeah. They're going to need to fight in that Rosh. Don't want to give away all the goodies on Roshan at this moment. The refresh, the Aegis, the Aegis, the Ag's Blessing. It's a lot to play with. And of course, the Aegis just ensures that your high ground is open. They're still playing tag. Trying to go in. Oh, yeah. Pass. Look at the damage. Look at the damage with the little shred around. Just takes down one. He's got another two. Force is gone. Now Tim's right onto Xavius. They'll go. Mortimer's Kisses are going to be expended. Buybacks are there, though. They might try to force this fight here. Polaris. Lelouch. Four seconds away from the lasso being up. But man, that little shredder. You've got to be careful. Xavius about to drop a Tim's now. The one in danger. Aeon Disc already propped. Meanwhile, towards the north, they've got Xavius on that Nyx. And they might just have him. He'll drop. That'll be a tieback. Natsumi, though, he'll move back in on some Mushu. But FBZ, he does have that Rolling Thunder. He'll chase down the morph. Even the Gobble Up, it doesn't connect. But the chase is on in the backside. They've got the lasso onto Tim. But there's no help. Lelouch, he needs to find his own way out now. Natsumi still caught out. He'll drop. He's right. got buyback, but he might need to commit it right now. I I don't know how you defend if you don't have the bodies. Xavius will go down. Boom. They aren't going to go high ground anyway, it seems. They might go for the Roshan first. That is the fourth Roshan of the game, John. There are two gems just sitting around here. There's still a gem here that Boom's just completely ignoring as well. So they're going to take that Rosh, get the Ags upgrade up, get the cheese refresh. And now they're going to have the protection to their high ground. However, there is a bit of an item spike here for, for Polaris. The lasso with the Ags. Two people being lassoed up. That's going to make the fights a bit more complicated for Boom. Again, they will secure the Roshan goodies now as they hold on to the Ags with FBZ. Having that shield crash with the Swash could also help keep the stuns out. I think FBZ's Swash buckled stuns nah, have been enabling Boom to find those openings. Now nah, they'll give it to Tim's. I, I think Tim's is probably more valuable with the spell still on two seconds. Mm. I mean, you've seen these team fights, John. They're just so chaotic. There's like a billion lassos happening. And keep in mind, the Axe is up for Lelouch as well. So he's got the double lasso on top of the double lasso. It'd be very detrimental here for Boom Esports. Minute and a half for those T5 items, by the way, and there is still a T2 tower standing. I think for once we might be able to see some. Yeah, it's probably going to come out. So both sides have decent enough map control. I think it's going to be easier for Boom, of course, with two lanes shoving in. They should look to finish up their tier 5 items first. So they start to take control of that bot triangle as well. Probably going to line up for that tier 2 tower push soon. The full Abyssal done here on FBZ. Again, relying on those bashes to deal with the spell immunity to keep that morphling locked in. Even the overwhelming blink not too far off now for FBZ. So we'll see how much of an impact that blink will have once it's up. But you can already see Boom on the aggressive. Going for the tier 2. No creep wave yet. Backdoor still kicks in. Half a minute away, Mike. Goodness. I wonder how much more silly this game can get. Uh, it's not silly. It's a very tense game here, Jonathan. Those tier 5 items, they make it even more exciting because even with this net worth deficit Polaris do have right now, they... Oh, oh. Nice. <laughs> Look at You're the Yopash. Yep. He's got a double Daedalus up. <laughs> I mean, why, why not just go for a Divine, Yopash? Why are we wasting time with two Daedalus? Just go straight for a exactly. Divine. Just, just go for that one hit kill opportunity. They're going to play it safe though, but they will smoke. Looking to be on the aggressive. At, at 60 minutes, just, just farm the tier 5s. They never, the want them. they never want them, John, these pro players. They never want to have any fun. No, they're leaving him. They don't want to break the smoke. Fair enough. They're going to move in, but Lelouch mm -hmm. is going to spot out Skem, but he does not see Yopage. It won't matter, though. He blinks out. Mirror Shield has been found, so Mushi will take that. We'll see who he gives it over to. Very, very nice item. Jump 
In they jump though, Lasso is out, they've got Skem on the clockwork, but the Rolling Thunder is their FPZ. Arena hits caught absolutely nobody, Mushi's still fine, they've got Mavis down, that'll be him without buyback, now they can go for more, Skem, Lasso, Lelouch, who are we going after? He's got no target, he's trying to retreat for now, Yopaj meanwhile still trying to fight back, he might drop though and he does, what? but he'll buy back immediately. Rolling Thunder again, FBZ on the spot, has caught out Force, and now has got Natsumi. They'll try for the man fight, waveform back to Tim's, but Natsumi's surrounded. He's gonna try and just do the best he can right now. In fact, he's 1v4ing them. He might be able to get some, but no, oh. the damage is too much, but he does have buyback on that Morphling. They still have a chance to try and counter, reinitiate, and force the game to continue, but the Megas are what's on Boom's mind. Lelouch will jump in, but he has no lasso. FBZ is going to drop the damage output from Natsumi, still too high, but he's going to buy back. Only three buybacks left on the map, and Mega Creeps, they are not up jump. They are not up yet. Even in a 5v3, I think Boom are feeling very nervous about initiating. In fact, never mind, Tims. He's in. He found the Dark Willow Mushi. He'll join in as well. Xavius is still fine, though. Lelouch, no. He breaks the linkers with the lasso. He needed that lasso to make the comeback Not happen. He'll buy back. They've lost Xavius. He'll commit a buyback. They'll jump in again, but the Aminidip Missile Blade. Natsumi's still trying, but he's just surrounded again. He'll pop the Satanic now. Back on your punch. He's got the snap fire. That'll be a tieback. Maybe they can defend this. Or maybe they can't. They lose dies back as well. It's all up to Natsumi. Mushi. Well, he'll try. Tims is down though on the Morphling. Or rather the uh, the Rubik. As the Morph is just bursting everyone down with the amount of damage they have. Hookshot in. Oh. Maybe they can actually get through him now. Maybe. Natsumi, they're trying. They've got the stun out. Oh they should God. have enough and they've got it. That's it. GG has to be called now. And they've called it. They've had enough Polaris. Oh. They put up a great fight. But Boom Esports make the comeback work. And what a game two of this grand final it was, John. What a game two it was. I I'm speechless. That was, that was an insane game. Polaris, Boom. Pulling all the stops out. You know, we said it from Drafter, right? Boom, we're going to have an easier time early on. With a snap fire, once the BKB was up for Yopaj, he didn't have much to worry about. However, Natsumi always had that late game scaling potential with a Dark Willow combination, and they did manage to make it work. Not quite enough to close out the game. They kind of slip up, forcing some fights outside. And I think it was that one fight where Yopaj was just about to die. The refresh was popped on force. They didn't find that snap kill. And the cheese was popped after the control. And that's where it kind of started bouncing back towards Boom. I think for Polaris, they, they put up a mean fight. I don't oh, think yeah. they did anything in particular wrong. Like, the execution was fairly clean, despite one or two small mistakes where Yopaj managed to live from missed spears. But the pressure was there. Boom just managed to perform a little bit more stable, not making as many of those small mistakes. And it just shows you how close these two teams are, Mike. And both of these teams, again, in the DPC... Once already in the lower, one still has to qualify. I don't know how that's even possible. Uh, I don't either, John. But speaking of the DPC, after this game too, it is about time. We've got a, a video announcement about the DPC. So we're going to head off to a short 10-minute break. But enjoy the announcement, ladies and gentlemen.